In your position, please. So I'm Jackie Pick, and I'm here as a volunteer. I am a lawyer, but I'm not acting as a lawyer in this case. I'm just helping out the legal team here. Um, and going to explain to you the evidence that we have from State Farm Arena here in Fulton County, um, which goes to what Ray was talking about in terms of fraud or misrepresentation. So when that cues, okay. So it's going to be tough because I'm going to have to depart from the microphone and point out sure, some fine. things at times. You're looking at one big room here. This is where, according to our witnesses, who have given us sworn affidavits, this is where the absentee ballots and military ballots are being tabulated on election day. So we have the tape from first thing in the morning all the way past the close of the polls. What you have is essentially two... Republican um, field organizers who were sent here to be observers. At no time were they actually permitted to observe in a meaningful way. I'm sorry, I have a voice issue today. They are roped off with the press. On the side, see if I can show you. Is, is, Tell you what, so, what you could do to help us out so that everyone can hear who's live streaming. If you would tell us what you're going to point to and then okay. go point to it. Okay. okay. All right. So now what will happen is these frames can move around. So this can get a little confusing, but I'll make sure to make it clear. We have two observers there that are going to show up, not at this point, this is in the morning, as you can see the daylight. They're going to get there at about eight o'clock to watch the tabulation of absentee and military ballots. But, according to their affidavits, at about 10 o'clock, there was one person working the polls who told everyone in the room to leave on the basis they were going to stop counting and return at 8.30 in the morning. So if I can get the frame uh, for approximately 10 o'clock or 10.20-ish. Okay. We'll have to come back to the morning for a different reason in just a second. Okay, so you can see what time it is. So we're at about 10 o'clock. And what you'll notice is that the workers are present, working, and you have, back in that corner, I pointed out to you, the press and the Republican observers. So according to the witnesses, the Republican observers, there is a lady who has blonde braids who comes out to announce we're going to stop counting. Everyone go home. And in fact, we see that. What happens is everyone clears out including the Republican observers in the press, but four people stay behind and continue counting and tabulating well into the night from that point, which is going to be about 1025 when they all clear out, or 1030. And they will continue counting unobserved, unsupervised, not in public view as your statute requires, until about one in the morning. The reason we know this is because when our Republican observers were forced to leave, they went to the Central Tabulation Center and they got news from a, or word from a news crew that in fact counting had continued. They have information that not everybody left according to plan and some people stayed behind. So this shocked them. So they returned back to State Farm Arena at about one o'clock in the morning where they confirmed that in fact people had just left State Farm Arena in contravention of what they've been told by the supervisors who are running this operation. So, okay, we're still at about 10 o'clock. Can you take us to about 10.25 so we can see the change? You're going to watch this place be busy and filled up to emptied at some time between 10.25 and 10.35, which is consistent with what the affidavits say.
Okay, so 1025, they're still there. Let's go to 1035. It takes it just a few minutes for the frames to actually catch up with it. There you go, with the time that you're seeing. So here you see it's all cleared out. We just went from 1025 to 1037, the place is a ghost town. This is where the people were vacated and told, go home, come back at 830, we will now stop working and stop counting. But notice who stays behind. You have four people, consistent with our affidavits, who stayed behind. And so you'll see the lady in purple, you'll see two women, in yellow in the back, which is where the scanners are there at the top, top right frame. And then the lady with the blonde braids also, who told everyone to leave. Those are the four people who will stay behind. So the Republican observers said they were the last people to leave State Farm Arena, along with the Fox News crew, accepting those four people. So what you're going to see, look at the ladies in yellow. You'll see that they will begin just sitting still, doing nothing, ostensibly not working, because after all, they said they're going to stop counting. They will wait until the witnesses over there in that roped off area, the press and the observers, leave the room. Then you'll see them move into action and begin scanning ballots. Okay, so I think what we can do now is fast forward to about 11. Do you see them? Yeah. Okay, there, there they walk. They're walking off. But the ladies in yellow are still there. Yes, keep your eyes on the lady in purple and the two in yellow and the woman in the blue apron with blonde braids because those are the people who stay behind. Okay, so what you're going to see happen at about 11 o'clock is once everyone is gone, coast is clear, they are going to pull ballots out from underneath a table. Watch this table. So actually this will take a few minutes, but we did not know when we first watched this, okay, is it normal to store suitcases of ballots under a table, under a tablecloth? Is that how they run the place? Maybe this is what they've been doing all day. Maybe this is what they're doing under all the tables. So we went back and watched the video as a, a team of us. We don't see that. What we see is typically, you're going to find ballots, you know, back in this corner, or coming in through a door, and then they get moved and circulated throughout the room. And it can get a little confusing because they have these black containers of ballots. They have the U.S. Postal Service containers. But what we were trying to do when we determined that there were being ballots being pulled out from underneath this table is, you know, what was the chain of custody? Where did they come from? Who put them there? When did they put them there? We only reviewed this at about 1 in the morning last night for a couple of hours. So we're going to need about 14 hours to watch it carefully because we fast forwarded through it several times. Um, and could not find that particular frame, but here's what we can tell you for sure. At about eight o'clock in the morning, and we're gonna roll this back and show it to you. There you go. So now they're gonna start pulling these ballots out from under this table. This table, the black one, was placed there by the lady with the blonde braids at about 8.22 a.m. in the morning. So she put that table there. So the same person who's staying behind now, the same person who cleared the place out under the pretense that we're going to stop counting, is the person who put the table there at 8.22 in the morning. Yeah, I saw four suitcases come out from underneath the table. Yeah, upper right hand, you see the gentleman in, in the red. So he just pulled one out. So what are these ballots doing there, separate from all the other ballots? 
And why are they only counting them whenever the place is cleared out with no witnesses? Is the question. So these machines can process about 3,000 ballots an hour. You have multiple, multiple machines there, and they're there for two hours. So you do the math. How many ballots went through those machines in those two hours when there was no one there to supervise, to be present, consistent with your statutes and rules, to supervise the tabulation? We believe that could easily be, and probably is certainly, beyond the margin of victory in this race. Because if it's only three scanners working for two hours, right, that's 18,000 ballots that went through. So we're now at 11.09. There were, in addition to the four workers that you see there, there were two other people who were bringing ballots in and out. Uh, the, the gentleman in red that you saw, and then a second person, I can't tell if it's a male or female based on their uh, hair being pulled back in their mask, but in any event, that's six total people. And so if we were to sit here for the next two hours, what we would see is that this operation just goes on and on and on. They're scanning until about 12.55 in the morning. So we kept the, the uh, video running and you know, we can show you the people who gave us the affidavits reappearing at that time, just as they said, around 1 a.m. to find out, are they in fact counting after they told us they would stop working or not? Um, and we will fast forward to that. But have you all seen as much as you'd like to see of what's happening here? I think I, so. I think you basically get the idea. Unless any member wants to see more. Or do you have any questions? No. No. Let's go ahead. Okay. So let's fast forward to about 12.55 in the morning. Okay, so it's updated to 12.50. You can see these people are still there up in the upper right-hand corner. Basically, they've wrapped up. This is the end of their operation. They've now completed about two hours of unsupervised tabulation of ballots. So now you're going to watch them leave. And let's fast forward to, um, let's go to 1.30. I think it's between 1.30 and 1.45 is when our two witnesses come back. They had to fight through security to get in there, but they did. And they say in their affidavits that two different people affirm for them that people have been counting from, you know, 10.30 when they cleared out until about approximately five minutes before they arrived. And they have the names of those people who told them that. Okay, now we're looking at, what is that, 142 in the morning. Is there a way to fast forward a bit or make it go a little faster? Okay, there are guys right there in the lower left-hand corner. So they've now returned to State Farm Arena, having heard from the press that they had continued counting because they wanted to see for themselves if that was really happening, uh, which was a complete contradiction to what they had been told by at least one person from uh, Fulton County who's an employee and spokesperson and also the lady in the blonde braids we spoke about earlier. Um, and so they see for themselves. And from this, we get the affidavit. I don't know the name of the lady in the blonde braids. Um, they simply gave a description to us, and you can, you can make out clearly who she is based on the people in the, in the film. Um, lady in the blonde braids, halfway down her back, is the person who yelled out, everyone leave and stop counting. Um, I believe Ms. Waller is the uh, spokesperson for Fulton County Elections who, was, who remained behind the other two people they don't have names for. 
They just said they were older women, and one of them had the name Ruby across their, her shirt somewhere. And that's as much as they know about who those people were. Um, but so our guys go in, they look around, they ask a few questions, and they leave. It is from their affidavits that we even knew to ask about this. And you might recall that the press reported there was like a supposed water break or water main break or pipe break or whatever, and that this was an excuse for people clearing out of State Farm Arena. It's not clear from the affidavits I saw whether or not that was the reason given by the election official or whether they gave any reason at all. They just said, stop, we're leaving, we'll be back at 8.30. So I don't know if that was at play here or not. Um, okay, can we back up to 8.22 a.m. in the morning, same frames, because we wanted to know, when did that table get put there? Who put it there? When did the ballots get put there? Who put it there? Okay, so 8.21, you'll notice the table's not there at all. Here it comes. There's the table going in that we're talking about where the ballots were obscured. That lady who's moving it is the lady with the blonde braids. She's dressed differently in the morning, so it took us a while to figure out that's the same person that you see at night with the blue apron on who's yelling for everyone to leave and who stays behind to help tabulate ballots after they've all left. So I can see that she's the one who chose to place that table there, close to the scanners. And so the video is still under review. We need to spend hours reviewing carefully how those ballots got there. But we can tell you that it appears to be an aberration from how the other ballots were handled in that room throughout that day. So that's the gist of it. Do you have any questions? Yeah, any questions? Fulton County Chairman Rob Pitts testified in a committee earlier today that the water break occurred <clears throat> at 6.07 a.m. and was repaired by 12.07 a.m. 8.07. 8 8 two hours. 6.07 until 8.07. And that the water main break did not disrupt the work of the whole room that his example was that if we were counting ballots working in here and the water main break was in the back or the, the leak, um, that we would just simply move out of the way of the, the, the leak. But he <coughs> um, testified this morning that the leak occurred at 6.07 and was repaired by 8.07 a.m. From what I'm seeing here, I don't see anybody moving around to avoid a leak. No. Um, he did state that the leak was greatly exaggerated and that it was not like wiped out the whole place. But um, I just thought that might be. What's that? I mean, the water leak, according to the oh. commission chairman, was at 6.07 a.m. I'm told that we have a video that it was a toilet leak and not a water main break. Um, but nope. I know that Mr. Pitt's name was mentioned in one of our affidavits. And our witness says that he was physically present in this room clear up until everyone was made to leave. So presumably, if he was in the room at the time, they made the announcement he would be a witness to that. Um, he was one of the last to leave, but he did leave in front of our witnesses, before our witnesses. Yes? Senator Parent. Thank you. Um, thank you for being with us. We heard from the Secretary of State's office earlier, just a couple hours ago, that um, They've investigated this repeatedly, that they had a monitor on site the entire time. And frankly, this has been debunked for weeks by our Secretary of State's office. I doubt he's what seen the video. Evidence, then I think the courts will probably be able to handle this once you present your evidence to them. As I'm aware, there have been about 40 lawsuits dismissed already. And according to the law of the state of Georgia, we do not have the power to submit alternate electors. The provision in the law is quite clear at, tw at 21-2-501-F. Is there a question? Senator, uh, ma ma Senator, we'll ask questions. We'll have a time for statements at the conclusion. If we yeah, my that. question is okay. what, uh, the question is, since this has been debunked repeatedly, what evidence can you give to us that counters what our elections officials have presented us with 
only an hour ago. You just saw it. Your officials need to watch the video. What about the fact that they say that they had a monitor there the entire time? I can't speak for them. Well, uh, thank have, you. They did not have the video. They said they had a monitor the whole time. Uh, Be quiet. Okay. You're looking at the room. Uh, there's, no, there's no Secretary of State. Uh, then maybe we should invite them back in. Uh, All right. Well, we may need to do that. Senator Tillery, you, what number are you? Number one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Pick. I, I just have two questions just to try to follow through and understand this a little better. Thank you for presenting this. Push on for yeah, you. get a little closer to Okay. Is that better? Just thank you again for being here. Thank you for presenting this. I just have two questions to kind of understand it a little better. My first is, I didn't have this before, but when Senator Perrin asked, it made me ask, have you been able to figure out where our monitor would have been or the monitor? Can you point that yes. out to us? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And it's easier to see in from where I'm sitting slide in the top left. Can you see, can you help me understand where, if that's where, uh, sorry, top right is where the scanners are, where would the monitor be in that screen? I'm just trying to be able to understand it. Yes, it's very confusing because these frames don't portray that accurately. What the witnesses said is that when they were in that roped off area I just pointed to with the press, not only could they not see a single ballot because they were so far away, they couldn't see those scanners at all. The only reason that they knew the scanners were there is because the election official, Ms. Waller, told them so. So I don't know if that means, I mean, they say it's an enormous room, um, that there was like a curvature to the room, but that is not a straight shot from where you see where they would have stood to the scanners because they could not see those scanners. Now, other people could depending on where you were in the room. Mr. Chairman, may I ask a follow-up? Yes. The first thing is, if, when you do find out that information, if you don't mind getting it back to us, I know you will, and thank you for that. Mm -hmm. The second thing is just a, more like a chain of custody process. You, we excuse, saw, excuse me, Senator. It's, I'm okay. getting reports that it's difficult to hear, so you may need to get closer to the microphone. So, I, I promise and, and I'm, I'm not doing do it for that. these guys. I'm doing it for these guys, so right. as long as they yeah. can hear me, I'm good. But a lot of people across the state want to hear what's being okay. said. On the, on the second question I have, and thank you for your answer to that one. Thank you for getting us that. We'll look for the answer back from you. Just a chain of custody question now. If we, we could clearly see the ballots in the top right screen come out from underneath the table, I could not see that there was a cover on the front of the table until your 822 video. Mm -hmm. So that was very helpful. Can, is there anything, can you show us where other ballots were coming from? Have y'all been able to figure that out yet? Because I think if they were coming from a different place, obviously that raises even more of a specter of concern or question. Right, so um, if you see, again, this is hard to understand where, where this would be coming from, but. So there you have the black, um, I'm going to call it a suitcase, containers for ballots. You also have boxes. Those are being moved around the room throughout the day. So it appears to us they're coming from there. From that back, from the top corner of the bottom left screen. Is that correct? correct? Yeah. Okay. And from there, they're shuffled around a lot. It gets confusing to watch this because, again, you're not looking at a linear representation of the room. Right. Where they're not coming from, as far as we can tell, is from under that table or any table. Right, and it does not look like the top corner of that bottom left screen is concurrent or consecutive or so, anyway tied into the bottom corner of the top right screen. It does not look like those are congruent. We're not seeing them come out of that corner by coming underneath that table, correct? I don't think we can tell that from the film. Okay. And I'm sure y'all will we'll get more information on that as well. Thank you for helping me just understand that a little bit better. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Okay. Okay. We're, was there another question? Just, just for the record, we did not receive this video until late last night, and we were reviewing it in the middle of the night, night last night. So right. we're, we're okay. still we're still reviewing it. There's still a lot more okay. to review. Senator Senator Jones. Thank. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for presenting this. And then that was going to be my question. Uh, Mr. Smith was uh, when exactly did we receive this video or you guys get in possession of this video and then also um, so you've had no time to when questioning the four people who are having a lot of movement and activity during the time frame that everyone goes home y'all have not had time to 
fi find out who those individuals are and, and actually question them on anything. Correct? That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Senator Rett. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Just quick refresher. When you talk with the authorities involved pertaining to the situation, what was the explanation? Or have you had a chance to speak with them? Do you mean Fulton County officials? Yes, ma'am. I've not spoken with them because we just got the video. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Senator Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Pick, thank you for being here, Mr. Smith. Thank you as well uh, for this very important presentation. My question is simply, um, and, and if this was addressed earlier, forgive me, but who's in charge of the cameras? Who uh, Were they placed there under the Secretary of State's office or by Fulton County? And who's in charge of monitoring them? And who's in charge of securing whatever footage is there uh, and the data? They are, they are operated by the uh, State Farm Arena. Um, the State Farm Arena. So these were not placed there for the purposes of that facility that, being used to count ballots? That's correct. This is just regular old security they, they, cameras. They, they that just use these to be there. for, you know, if, if, if you're in the arena and you have a slip and fall or there's a fight or something happens in the arena, there's, th these uh, videos are, as I understand, are s subpoenaed all the time. Okay, thank you. Yes. Senator Beach, just oh. let me get your microphone on. Oh, yes. Is it on? Yes. Hello? Yes. Yes. Um, I think you said there were three scanners, correct? Is there a way to know if those scanners were used between 1030 and 1 a.m.? Do they track, are they tracked by time when things are scanned through them, ballots are scanned through them? Do you know? Uh, I, I'm not sure. Okay. There have been conflicting reports about whether or not those machines keep a log for in real time. They, they certainly should. I mean, historically, that's the standard required. But whether or not they will hand those over or kept them, I don't know. Okay. Are there any other questions? Okay, Senator Parent, one more question. Uh, did you mention that Chairman Pitts was was there or you, you spoke to him about being there during this episode? I was not there. This is a witness affidavit that says he was there. Okay. Almost up until um, he was one of the last people to leave. Not as late as the witnesses that we have, but he was there. So he just told us he wasn't there just an hour ago. Okay. okay. Well, I don't know. Yeah. One of the witness affidavits oh. says he's there. Well, okay. okay. So uh, we heard from uh, Senator Brass. Can I, can I and, no, ma'am. We need to move on. We have a lot of questions. What number are you, Senator Brass? Seven. Seven. So, in, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Ms. Pick. Uh, so, the table was placed there around 8.30ish, we said, a.m.? 8.22 in the morning, approximately. At what point, or, and y'all may not know this since you just got the video, at what point did the boxes of ballots go under the table? We don't time. have the answer to that, so Still we fast-forwarded through the tape several times to try to find that because we haven't had time to review it in real time, which would be 14 hours of tape to review. Right. So we just haven't had time to look at that. Understood. Uh, do we know about how many ballots would go in each one of those suitcases? So we have a witness who says that inside the suitcases, she estimates that about 6,000 ballots can fit in there. And there were how many that were taken out? We don't know. Okay. Thank you. Senator Gooch? <clears throat> Maybe a question for Senator Parent. I heard you say several times this has been debunked, yes, but sir. I also just heard that this video just appeared last night. So how could it have been debunked? Well, my response, not being an expert, um, is that th th these very allegations came up right away after the election almost a month ago and have been repeatedly discussed by the Secretary of State's office, including everything that we're seeing here. But is this and not there have the, been explanations for all of it. Is this not the first time but, this video has been shown? I believe that this is the yes. first time this video has been yes, seen. And it the, is. And That's the news correct. media it, hasn't seen this video or have not? They, they have not. Because right. I've, I've been in contact with counsel for the State Farm but Arena. This, and it will be today. Okay, Senator Anderson, you're on number seven, correct? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you for being here today. Uh, my question is, if they said that they were going to shut down and no more counting, does the election system shut down to where it can't count no more, or can it keep on counting? Well, so 
I referenced the statute, which shows that the Georgia elections must be conducted in public view. That means the press can watch. That means the other party can watch. Both parties are represented to be observers or monitors, whatever. Here, they were made to leave. So it was done in contravention of the statute. But my question is, is the equipment, the, the, the counting system, <clears throat> does it suppose to shut down when nobody's supposed to be counting? Um, I, I defer to Ray on that. I, I, I do not know the answer to that question. It has to be secured if they're going to leave the premises well, that, that, for that, sure. That's, that's getting leading to what I'm, it, is it actually securing the count even though they say that we're not going to count? There's not supposed to be activity with election workers if there's not public view. That's the law in Georgia. And the, and the ballots have to be secured at all times. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I think uh, we may need to. Do you have anything else that you'd want to point out about the video? I think that's everything, right? Okay. That's everything for now, yes. Okay. All right. Thank well, you. Well, um, thank you, Senator. Thank you. I think we had. Uh,